Um, I was at the cemetery with um, some people and I was doing something completely different. And I walked down that row and I'm, I start to count one, two, three, four, and it was just endless. Uh, and I, there must be a story here, you know those things that as the general say, they get into your skin. So I need to find out who these guys were. And um, I did some research and all of the indications pointed to um, an area outside Villa Grande. Villa Grande was uh, 8th Indian Division terrain, if I'm not mistaken. Lee. And I checked with a friend who'd written a book about the, the Indian military uh, in North Torn and on the Gustav Line. And he said, yes, but uh, just a few hundred meters out of Villa Grande itself, there were Canadians who had been pulled back from the front line. So then I contact um, some people in Canada saying, have you got um, the diary for the 1st of January 1944? Can you see if anything happened? And I got a reply from Don Denny. I don't know if anybody knows him. He was a military yeah. attache in Rome um, a few years ago. And he said, the military diary says, and basically it says this, that um, there was a, um, a thunderstorm um, by what is described as a monastery, and that um, a group of uh, Royal Canadians had taken refuge in this monastery, and the infrastructure had been damaged by artillery fire. And um, the wind was so strong, it blew the, the church down on top of it. Um, this is this. And these are the nine crosses of the nine young men that you saw in the cemetery this morning. And they all have a name, and eight of them have a face. That's Fraser, Alvin. The one who doesn't have a face, and despite my best efforts, I haven't been able to find a photograph of him, is um, John Edgar Langbridge. And John Edgar Langbridge was 20 years old, he had a 15-month-old son, and he left a widow who was his age. So I think, you know, I need to find out more about And we have been able to find out nothing. The family has disappeared completely. So, you know, you think, this baby was a boy. We know his name. We know where he was born. Did he ever know that his father was a, a hero in Ortona? Did he grow up knowing? Um, did they hide it from him? Because I know a lot of a lot of widows remarried and, and their sons and daughters were brought up not knowing um, what their fathers had done. And we have been unable to track him down. So, because we couldn't find this photograph and I still wanted him to be here, that is the widow, the widow's telegram, telling her that her husband was um, killed in action in Oklahoma. So if any of you have any ideas about where a photograph of John Edgar could be found, I'd be incredibly grateful because he has, um, he has a place in my heart. Because he was just a boy. <coughs> and that was the thing that drove me to uh, when Andy suggested this, uh, this trail, this history trail for your regiment. I think the one most important figure for me was John Edgar because he is a mystery. And um, the only information I could find out about him, like Henry Gurkha, I know how tall he was, I know that he was a skinny little guy, I know that he had light brown hair and brown eyes, and that he used to work uh, making tires uh, in a place called Petrolia. And that he had tiny little scars on his arms from the job he did. And that's all I know about him. So this is for John Edgar. Were the soldiers that died in this collapse, were they all private soldiers or was it across the ranks? <coughs> it was across the ranks. Okay. I think Fraser was a... Was, uh, right in the graveyard. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, no, one, one of those, not, one of the nine men was a corporal. Oh. That's uh, Fraser. Right. Yeah. He, was uh, and he was the oldest, he was 36. And the, the one thing I forgot to say, the little research we were able to put together about John Edgar, he'd been part of the Royal Canadian Regiment of Cordes. He came from the Irish Regiment. So that was his destiny. Really? Really? Yeah.
And the people who've joined us today, um, when they found out that we were going to do this little ceremony, I haven't invited people from the general public because I felt this was more of an intimate thing. It's not a big uh, publicity stunt or anything like that. You know, it's, it's part of the, the regimental soul. Um, but because they are here, right on the spot where these men died, they've always wondered who they were. They knew about the crosses. That photograph came from the gentleman who's at the back of the crowd there. When I came here looking, he said, oh, I've got a photograph of what it looked like in 1943. Was that with you, Andy, that day? Uh, I think second half. Right. And um, it was knowing that the Dideo family, who has always lived here, um, had found a copy of that photograph and they keep it amongst their possessions to remember the Canadians who died here on the 1st of January 1944, uh, when they weren't even on the front line anymore. Um, then I, you know, I got in touch with them and I said, you know, we had intended to do something, and then it became a more complex uh, research, but we finally got it um, in our pocket, and then the, the sign is going up, and they all said, can we come? We'd like to be part of this. And I said, I don't think that's a problem for anybody. It's, um, it's a good way for the local community to engage with all of you. So it's all these people behind you who remember, and they will now be able to remember them even more easily because they've got the photographs in front of them. Per i signori uh, della comunità locale, um, questo è stato un progetto che è andato avanti per molti mesi perché abbiamo dovuto fare delle ricerche e uh, penso che lo sappiate tutti che queste nove croci qui sono nel, nei ruderi di questa chiesa, nel, questo è il primo gennaio del 43. E dopo delle ricerche abbastanza approfondite abbiamo scoperto che queste nove croci sono di questo giovane, questo giovane, questo giovane, questo, 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 questo e questo. L'ultimo non abbiamo trovato una foto ed è stato il fatto di avere un'ombra eh, di un ragazzo di 20 anni che ha lasciato in Canada un figlio di 15 mesi ma è sparito, non ho trovato tracce, loro le famiglie, le tracce, le lettere, ce l'abbiamo trovato. Di lui non una foto, non che fine ha fatto il figlio, la vedova probabilmente era giovanissima, si è risposata e anche i genitori sono spariti. Quindi per non lasciarlo senza traccia, questo è il telegramma che la vedova di vent'anni ha ricevuto quando questo ragazzo eh, è morto qui dove, dove voi state. E um, forse la tragedia nella tragedia è che lui era di un altro reggimento e quando il Royal Canadian Regiment ha perso molti uomini alle quattro strade per uh, um, riempire i plotoni che non potevano andare a combattere perché erano pochi lui era uno di quelli che era stato chiamato e quindi gli hanno cambiato reggimento e faceva parte di questo reggimento da quattro giorni. Se lui rimaneva dove era, probabilmente non gli sarebbe successo quello che è successo dietro a te. Quindi io so che voi eh, in qualche modo ehm, vi ricordate perché Remo mi ha dato la foto all'inizio, quello che mi ha poi spinto a fare queste ricerche. E adesso avete le foto, sapete chi sono. Quindi quando ci passate davanti, i nomi sono questi. Eh, una preghiera. Grazie. Grazie a te. Le ricerche sono state effettuate con Crossroads, da Crossroads, da Crossroads. Da Crossroads. ma anche da, eh, dal Greg Center, che sono, è un centro di ricerca per la storia, la guerra e la società, che sono eh, partner di, di Crossroads, loro sono in Canada, il reggimento stesso e la la commissione Commonwealth War Graves Commission che è quello che tiene tutte le tombe in maniera eccezionale nei vari cimiteri di guerra. Quindi dobbiamo ringraziare tutte queste persone. Signora, scusi una cosa, se era possibile. Però la popolazione durante quei periodi molto difficili ha apprezzato il comportamento, questo lo ricordo di mio padre, mm. mio zii, tutto, 
dei canadesi, dei soldati canadesi, che eh, erano sempre pronti eh, a prendersi carico di quelli che erano i problemi della povera gente, perché lì c'era il problema di mangiare, di coprirsi, del freddo, di tutto, magari portando anche pezzi di cioccolato d'altro. E quindi il ricordo locale, io sono nato dopo la guerra, però il ricordo che non abbiamo i nostri genitori è che i soldati canadesi erano ben visti e persone che si, si sono stati sempre molto generosi nei confronti della popolazione che era in sofferenza. E, e questo è un ringraziamento che io mi interpreto sicuramente okay. il sentimento anche dei residenti qui, della famiglia di Deo e di altre famiglie che volevamo eh, eh, esternalizzare oggi che loro sono presenti qui insomma, per conto di questo. Questo è il generale Thompson che è, è uno delle figure di spicco di questo reggimento. Se, se lei può tradurre quello che insomma... Il, se, so this is what we were saying and Cindy's been telling us about the engagement between um, the military and the local population and what this gentleman is saying and he's talking about Canadian soldiers and he said apart from commemorating these young men um, his father he, d he was born after the war and what his uh, grandparents and, and parents handed down to him was Canadian soldiers were good people you could rely on them to help you with food with medication um, and they really help the population get back on its feet. So what all of these people have come to say is thank you. So thank you. Thank you. That's it. Right. So is, it, is there one person that needs to be recognized or, are we, or is there too many of them? I think there's too many of them. C'è una figura, non so, un'associazione di questa zona perché il generale vorrebbe lasciare una medaglia commemorativa. A chi la possiamo affidare? Eh, vabbè, Remo, che... Mi insomma, ha tenuto un po' testa. Sì, sì. This is Remo Di Deo. Ah, And Remo che, lives right che there. Che è mio cugino, eh. This is his picture. L'associazione? Yes. L'associazione che cosa dovrebbe fare? Io ce l'ho l'associazione qua. No, e lui deve lasciare una medaglia a qualcuno che ah, insomma vabbè. è stato coinvolto ah, no, nel no, progetto. Lui, lui. The right person is Remo because he gave me all the initial sì, information. Sì, sì. So, e lui che mi ha dato This is what we, il, this is what we call uh, the Colonel of the Regiment's coin. Even if I'm a general, my position is Colonel of the Regiment. Allora, questa è una delle, delle contraddizioni della vita militare. Lui è un generale e anche un veterano dell'Afghanistan, eh, però il suo titolo che io in, lui incoggeto è colonnello del reggimento, anche se in realtà è un generale. E lui ha una medaglia. And if you look on the, on the chart here, you can see in the top the, where it says the Royal Canadian Regiment. Up there, right? That's on the coin. Quindi questo è riportato qua. And this, these letters, VRI, are Latin. In Latin. Victoria Regina Imperiex, Queen Victoria, Empress. Quindi queste VRI è um, la, della Regina Vittoria, l'inglese famosa, risnonna della Regina Elisabetta. Because our regiment is 140 years old and it was raised under Queen Victoria's reign. E nel, nel regno della Regina Vittoria, che questo reggimento è stato fondato, e oggi nel 1883, compie, compie il 140 anni oggi, quindi è il compleanno del reggimento oggi. Eh. Senti, And the traditional way to pass this corn is we shake hands. Dagli la mano e si prende la medaglia. Thank you. alla caduta di Costantinopoli quando i cristiani che erano perseguitati dai musulmani che vennero di qua scapparono dalla ex Jugoslavia che si allora si chiamava Schiavonia e vennero qui nella parte dell'Adriatico fondarono questa chiesa che in dialetto si chiama Santa Jelena ma in realtà Jelena è il nome slavo di Elena Okay. Um, the church that you see here dates back to the 1500s. And what I was uh, what I was mentioning on the bus this morning that this part of the Italian coastline um, welcomed and it, it continues to welcome refugees and people who flee uh, from their own country. And the people who built this church here were from a place called Schiavonia who were Slavs. Ah, okay. So, uh, Slavonia, and the original name of the church is, come si pronuncia? Jelena? Jelena. Jelena, which has become Elena in, in Italian. So that's St. Helen. So it has um, a historical background, 
and a cultural background because it wasn't built by the local Catholics but by a refugee community who um, fled from uh, the wars and the, the conflicts that were on the other side of the Adriatic at that time and which we still see traces of Bosnia Kosovo. So it has a, a double meaning and the families keep the church alive. They, uh, they try to keep so this, the Dideo family that lived here originally came from Medjugorje, you know the famous miracles of um, Medjugorje, that's where they were originally from, and a lot of these outlying villages were founded by um, refugees and migrants from uh, the ex-Yugoslavia. Yeah. Right. Do we want to take a picture? Yes, 